here with David Jones, who is the Senior Associate Counsel for Texas Realtors. He had a hand in helping provide the new COVID-19 contract addendum that they issued last week. David, tell us a little bit about the use and purposes of this addendum. Sure. Uh, thank you, Emily. Good morning. Uh, the purpose of this new addendum is to attempt to provide some certainty uh, in these uncertain times. Yeah. Uh, you know, the COVID-19 or coronavirus, as people are calling it, it is wreaking havoc in the real estate industry, uh, and it's affecting buyers and sellers, it's affecting appraisers, uh, inspectors, lenders, everybody. So what we tried to do is provide this addendum that could address at least some of those circumstances that might pop up when the transaction is delayed. Uh, by any party uh, due to, you know, a quarantine or some type of closure. Okay. Walk me through how it impacts uh, if you are representing the seller versus if you're representing the buyer, what it says about both sides of the transaction. Okay. Well, we, we wrote the form broadly, intentionally, okay. so that it will cover many different circumstances. So basically what the new addendum does is if the closing, which is generally paragraph nine in most of these contracts, mm -hmm. if the closing is delayed because of a COVID-19 issue, uh, whether it affects any of the parties, whether it's the seller that is having trouble you know, closing or whether it's the buyer that's having trouble closing, um, if the closing delay is delayed, it gives an automatic 30-day extension to try to close. And then after that 30 days, if you still can't close, now the parties, either party can say, okay, I'm done, I'm gonna terminate. And the earnest money will go back to the buyer. So basically neither party is going to be held in default. And you basically can just walk away if the transaction can't get done because of a uh, COVID-19 issue. And I would expect that that is, any kind of COVID-19 impact. So be it a shelter in place order at the county or city level <coughs> or someone, a, one of the parties being actually impacted by the illness, him or herself. It, it's is, the impact associated with the virus. Yeah, that's correct. It, it covers both mandatory quarantines or closures or voluntary. So if the buyer or the seller gets sick themselves mm -hmm. and they can't, get out and do what they need to do, or if they're sick and, you know, the inspector can't get in to inspect the property. Any type of issue regarding either prop, either party is, this addendum is then going to kick in. Okay. Some are saying that that is a, that it being so broad and giving such leeway to the termination of the contract with no penalty to either side, is a little bit far reaching perhaps because as it stands today there would be penalties in place how, how do you respond to that well i will respond that this is designed to meet the party's needs Got okay it. so this is this is not a mandatory form for the parties um and there are other forms as well other existing forms so you know our realtor members they really have to figure out what the parties need, what they want, what's gonna work best for them, because there are existing forms that could work. If the parties just wanted to give a 30 day or 14 days, whatever, additional time to close, they could do that with the amendment. Um, or if they wanna affect you know, the buyer's time to, to, to get buyer approval, they can do that with them. Uh, so this is just one particular form. Um, it may not work for every transaction. It may not work for every property, um, but it is, a, it is available. And I would also say, you know, it's one of those challenges in trying to create a form that is going to be used for thousands of transactions. It's impossible right. to create one form that's going to work for every situation. So if the buyer and the seller um, have some idea of what they want and it's not this form, they can always contact a private attorney and have that private attorney draft up, you know, the specific language that will work for them in their transaction. Yeah, no, I, and I really appreciate that 
um, writing in a denim to apply to the whole state in a completely unprecedented time is something that is not easy to do. And we value that you guys made that attempt. And I know that Texas Realtors would join APOR in saying that agents should be talking to their brokers about the use of this form or any other form that they might consider implementing as a part of their response to the, the situation that we're in. Brokers need to guide agents closely on what their expectations are and what their policies will be within the firm. That is correct. Awesome. Well, David, thank you so much for joining us and just giving us a quick rundown on the use of this new form that y'all have released. We really value our partnership with Texas Realtors and appreciate the work that you're doing for us. Absolutely. Thank you, Emily. Uh -huh.